Hi guys, I have Old Pultni. This is a single malt you may or may not have heard of. But it so happens that the malt activist has recommended this to me. He's kind of challenged me to do a review of this. And uh, your malty, this is the only one I could find, big bro. So I'm going to review this. I hope you enjoy this video. Uh not bad, not bad. Now, Old Pultney 12 years is matured in fine oak, hand select, ex bourbon, gently absorbing the distinctive sea air. Not very welcoming, if I'm being fair. Lively with a delicate mineral salted spiciness. Not very cool, to be fair. Old Pultney 12 years old is a singular evocative spirit. Okay. Okay, a bit boring, if I can say that about the description, but then until I don't taste the whiskey, I think it's a bit not nice to comment on it. So anyways, further on we see it's for 4,870 rupees. Okay, distilled and matured by the The bottle looks like this. Um, you have a nice curvy spine right here and you have the, the main sticker. Um, this is the front sticker. If this bottle is sitting in a bar, it is easy to not notice it. And it's an average looking bottle. In fact, I would say it's just about at par. I don't think it looks that good. And um, kind of wick, Caithness, single malt scotch whiskey, founded by James Henderson in 1826, the maritime malt product of Scotland. Um, the last time I drank, I had a lot of uh, Glenfiddich 18. I wanna say 14 large of it, so a bottle. And uh, yeah, I realized that after 10 drinks, I start falling all over the place. I'm not just drunk, I'm falling all over the place. So that was a bit scary for me. Glenfiddich 18 is presently the best single malt in the world. And if I have to name one more, I would say Glen Morangi. Trying a new single malt is always a good experience. And I can't remember the last time I tasted a single malt, which kind of was bad. Yeah. Anyways, enough of talk. We're just gonna pop this open. Okay, there you have it. Okay. Let's uh, pour some in my nosing glass. This glass is by the Dram Club. I don't know if I'm gonna make a, 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 a tall drink or a small drink. Let's see. Anyways, in, if you talk about the profile, I think it looks kind of thin. Or medium I would say which is perfect I think it's perfectly made and the color is quite inviting and rich let's see what it smells like maybe because I read it I do smell that salty sea salt what uh, whatever they're talking about but it has a nice nice welcoming aroma about it it's like some sailor from the 1990s lost in the sea it's almost as if William Lawson got a pair of single malt wings Nice, warm smell, very woody, I can definitely tell you that. 40% ABV in this one and uh, we have a 700 milliliter liter bottle. Okay, I didn't notice that but just read that. So 700 for 4870. This is at par with all your whiskies. I got this from Delhi. You may find it cheaper in your region. Let me know. So the smell is quite good. I really like it. I'll tell you 10 things I like about the smell. It's oily. It has a nice warm hue. The salt uh, is very welcoming. The wood is perfectly blended with the salt. Very nice finish of the smell. There is something called the finish of the smell I've come to realize and it has a nice finish. You know, sometimes the smell can be very one-sided or two-sided. I think this has something for people like me. You know, and I'm so excited now. All of a sudden, the surge of electricity you feel when you try some nice booze. Urgh, it's there, dude. It's there. It's there for us. All right, dude. Before I forget, this is my little pill uh, to ensure I don't have a hangover. This is called Party OK. I'm just going to have one of those. All right, dude. Back to the smell, I think it has, a, it has 
now that I'm smelling it, it's almost perfumey. What does this smell like? If you ask me what name, which whiskey is this and you give me this. I won't be able to guess it to be honest. Because of the nice warm hue, it smells like a good rye whiskey. The wood and spice is perfectly blended in the smell at least. And on the nose, I want to give this a high 8. A high 8, like an 8.6 or an 8.5. Which is amazing. And uh, smelling whiskey is also... I'm going to I'm going to take a sip from this only. Why not? Sure, let's do it, man. What a welcoming. What a welcoming. Um I th I think I read X Bourbon somewhere and immediately you are uh greeted by a non-burning uh welcoming bourbon-like effect, which is so delectable incomplete in his posture. Towards the finish, towards the finish there is unfortunately or fortunately a bit of a bite, a bit of a spice but I think it's not lingering. I will correct myself if I'm long, wrong. So first thing first, bourbon definitely makes a presence. Um, am I, am I, and the sea spice is definitely there but it's been tamed a little so it's not all over the place. It's concise and it comes towards the end, towards the aftertaste. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm also... No, there you go. The spicy tannin just showed up. Let's give it another read, okay, What, uh, whatever they say in front. So they say, a fine oak hand-selected ex-bourbon cast, gently absorbing the distinctive sea air. Lively with a, lively is for sure. Lively with a delicate mineral salted spiciness. That is what I was talking about. The mineral salted spiciness, it's not easy to place that. Um, and it's a singular evo uh, ev evocative uh, spirit. Um, oh, well, I'm not gonna read this paragraph. Some say that back in the day, our wash still had to be shortened to fit in the still house, resulting in the unusual shape today. This is uh, the shape is because of this, uh, you know, because of what they make the whiskey in. So it has an unusual shape, which is why the bottle has the shape. I'm so glad I read that. What's certain is that Smuggler's Kettle, as it is affectionately known, is the beating heart of the distillery, shaping the style of both our bottle and the precious whiskey it harbors. Now, I want to see, you're probably going to see a lot of videos online, right? But I just want to say one thing. Um, usually, whiskeys which have a spicy note are not very friendly with water. There are a few exceptions of whiskeys that make a decent handshake with uh, the spice element but they are limited to your Glen Morangi Tain. Um, just one I can think of from the top of my head. If you try Indri single malt and if you were to try uh, all of the Paul John whiskies, they're not very friendly with the water. In fact, Indri is the most friendly with the water, but that spicy tannin end is kind of unforgiving. And am I, am I pronouncing it correctly? Correct me if I'm wrong. Old Pultney encourages you to drink responsibly. Distill mature bottle in Scotland. Um, yeah, much hint of sea air. Beautiful words. <laughs> now they are seeming beautiful. So how does it taste neat? Is it a go neat? Yes. If you Let's not waste any more time and do what we have to do, man. I'm just gonna pour some more of this whiskey, okay? In this nice Johnny Walker glass of mine. Yeah. The funny thing is, I think I got this Johnny Walker whiskey, uh, if I can say so about the Glenfiddich 18. Now I've added some luscious looking ice to this glass and I'm gonna add what I will call a smash of water, not a dash of water, okay? 
That's a nice lick right there. And I'm gonna let this sit for five minutes and I'll be back with you. Anyways, we're back now. So five minutes, we let the drink sat as we always do. Let's see what it tastes like. I hate to say this, but I was right. It is quite, now the sea salt really comes out with the water. Although we let it sit for five minutes in this beautiful glass of mine, we try to make it luscious, but it is not at all water friendly. The second sip is perhaps a bit more um, appeasing to the whole spectrum, but definitely seems to lack. But so far with ice uh, and, uh, and water, I feel the drink, the, 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 the basic instinct evaporates and it gets merged with something else, which is not, not quite amazing, you know. So guys, I had another drink of Old Partney with ice and water, but unfortunately for me, nothing much changed. I still think it's a, it's a, this whiskey is more of a fail than a pass. I want to give it six out of 10. And the simple reason for that is that there is no redeeming quality of Old Partney to the maritime salt and the sea salt, whatever the hell, whatever the hell that flavor is. It doesn't work well with water at all, which is a bit of an oxymoron of life, or which is a bit of a irony because it does come from the sea, right? So it should mix well with water and it should be very expressive, but salt-based whiskies never mix well with water. I probably am gonna stop having all salt-based whiskies. This is my last one because I wasted enough money. I've got the Paul John and I've got the Indri single malt and then I've got this. Um, all of them have been a complete fail if you ask me. And I'm not somebody who likes to spy the salty sense of old Pultony and I don't recommend it to anybody um, unless you're willing to forego H2O. If you're willing to forego H2O and you just want to have a drink on the basis of being neat, fantastic. This is a good runner-up whiskey. But overall schematics of this whiskey are a bit not here, not here, not there. So it's a bit of a fail for my money. Four thousand eight hundred seventy bucks. I could have been, I could have been king of the world, and I could have got a monkey shoulder, or I could, have, I, I could have got a Glenfiddich twelve, which which could have cost me five thousand bucks. Way better than this. Way better. Miles better than this. Never. Am I buying another salty whiskey? Boom. Peace out. Don't waste your money, man. I took the hit for the team. Hit that like button. It's not gonna cost you money, cheap ass. Peace out.